Welcome to Grade 10 Math. In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you're going to be doing in Grade 10 Math. We're going to go over some vocabulary, a little bit of review about lines and uh, equations of lines and how to graph them. So um, first off, when you start Grade 10 Math, you're going to be learning a lot of really different things that you didn't learn in Grade 9. This is not a repeat of Grade 9 in any way whatsoever. The only thing that's kind of something you've done before is lines. You did lots of equations of lines in Grade 9, slope, y-intercept, x-intercept, and so on. So the course starts with a little bit of work with linear relations, solving linear equations and systems of equations. And we'll go through all those methods. The second chapter or unit is called analytic geometry, where you're going to talk about different types of um, how do you find the midpoint of a line, the length of a line, equations of circles, and a little bit of analyzing geometric properties. And then you get into the tough stuff. You're going to be working with polynomials that you did some work with in grade nine. Um, but in addition to that, you're going to learn how to factor and how to work with quadratics. So that is a huge section for the grade 10 curriculum. And finally, you're going to do some trigonometry. All of these lessons are very important basic lessons that you will build on in grade 11s and 12s. So it's very important that you really get a good grasp of your grade 10 math curriculum. So putting that aside, let's talk about systems of linear equations first. Um, the vocabulary, what is an x-intercept and what is a y-intercept? So the best way to explain these two here, of course, would be to have um, an example here. Let's draw one, let's draw a line on this coordinate plane. Remember when you're using um, coordinate planes that you label them? You should have arrows on the ends of your graphs, X and Y, and it's also very important that you put a scale on it. The teacher will not know what your scale is if you don't label it. And I've had students give me answers which I said, well, that's really nice, but I don't know where you're crossing the X axis. So the X intercept is simply this place right here. Let's get some nice color for you. This is your x-intercept, and all that means is where does it intercept or cross the x-axis. So here's your x-intercept, and here's your y-intercept. So x-intercept would be 2, y-intercept looks to be about 1.5, y-intercept. An equation, well, you know what an equation, an equation has to have an equal sign in it. So something like 3x plus 2y, oh, I said 3, 3x plus 3y equals 9. There's an equation. It has an equal sign. It has two variables. There's our next term you should know. The variables are the things that you can change in an equation. I put in a value for x and a value for y, and I need to get 9 in order for it to be part of this equation. So the variables are these letters introduced in grade 9. And an ordered pair, an ordered pair is coordinates. That's like me having like an X and a Y. That's an ordered pair. So if I wanted to know what ordered pair satisfies this equation, I could just using my head, I could say, well, if I put in a, a 1 for the X, that would be 3. And if I want it to be equal 9, then the y would have to be 2. So I could say 3, 2 is a solution to this equation. That didn't make sense. I said 1 and 2, didn't I? 1. 1 for the x. 3 plus 6 equals 9. That's what I was saying, 3. So 1, 2 is a solution. Also, 2, 1 would be an, a solution as well, right? 2 and 1. Because when x is 2, that's 6 plus 3 gives me 9. So these are your ordered pairs. What is a constant? A constant is a number uh, such as 9. So usually you see constants in, um, let's say I had 
y equals 3x plus 2. This is constant. It doesn't change. I'm always adding 2. A coefficient, however, is this number in front of the variable. 3 is the coefficient of x. 3 was the coefficient of y over here. A point of intersection, that means you have to have two lines. A line can't intersect itself, but if I had another line over here like this, and we're going to do lots of work with that, this, the coordinates for this point right here would give me the solution to the system of equations. We'll get into more of that in a couple of lessons. But the point of intersection would be an ordered pair. They intersect at this very point. And that point would satisfy both equations. And by saying satisfy, I mean if this coordinate was, well, let's say it's, it's minus 2 and 3, then minus 2 and 3 would be on this line and also on this line. A solution, the solution could be an ordered pair for a, a system of equations, or a solution could be, let's say I said x plus 2 is equal to 9, then you would say x is equal to 7, because 7 plus 2 is 9, or you could say I'm going to bring the 2 across an equal sign and subtract it. So this would be a solution. So those are words that you should be familiar with. If not, just listen again one more time. I'm sure you've come across all this vocabulary before in grade 9. So let's talk a little bit about graphing a linear relation. And there's three different ways. Well, actually, there's four if you have a graphing calculator. But the kinds of um, graphing we're going to talk about here are, is graphing that you would do yourself without a calculator, using your own head. Imagine that. Okay, so let's take a look at this equation here. I said y equals 3x minus 2. I want to graph it using a table of values. So for a table of values, you want to make x and y, and you want to plug in some values and see what you get for y. So let's start with, let's do from minus 1 to, let's go to 2. <clears throat> so if I put in minus 1 for x here, I'd have y equals 3 times minus 1 minus 2 more. So that would be minus 5. If I plugged in 0, so 3 times 0 is 0, minus 2 gives me minus 2. If I put in 1, I would have 3 times 1 minus 2, which is 1, and finally 6 minus 2 well, I should have written it this way. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 equals 4. So these now are coordinates on my linear relation. Minus 1 for the x, minus 5 for the y. So minus 1, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 5. So there's one point. When x is 0, y is minus 2. When x is 1, y is 1. And when x is 2, y is 4. So let's go 2 and 4. And then I can draw my line. Now you know that to draw a line you only need two points. But when you're doing a table of values, it's always a good idea to do three or four points just in case you make a calculation error. And then of course your line would be wrong. Okay, so let's draw this line on the same coordinate. So we have 2x minus y equals 4. Now, it's hard to solve for y. I mean, you can do some just calculations in your head. So if I said when x is minus 1, let's do the same values, 0, 1, and 2. When x is minus 1, I have minus 2 minus y equals 4. So that's a little bit more work. And what I might want to do before I start is to put the y to the other side of the equation and the 4 over here so that I have it like this. So I'm actually solving for y when I put in an x. This is much more every time you'd be doing a calculation. So let's rearrange this equation. I'm going to take the minus y and I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to take the 4 and put it over here. So that's going to give me 
x minus 4 is equal to y. And now it's much easier for me to find the values for y here that are going to um, that are going to work. Okay, so let's do that. We put in minus 1 now. We have minus 2 minus 4. That's much easier to calculate than working with this every time. Put in 0, I get minus 4. Put in 1, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So these are my coordinates. You could write them out like this. These are your ordered pairs or your coordinates, right? Coordinates on the graph. We could have done that with this, but we just did it in our head. So minus 1 and minus 6, there's one point here. When x is 0, y is minus 4. When x is 1, y is minus 2. And when x is 2, y is 0. So here's my line. It's going to go through these four points like that. Now you might say, would these lines intersect? They will intersect somewhere. They're not parallel because you can see if I just rearrange this equation, put the y to the other side so I have it in my y equals mx plus b format, that they have different slopes. Remember that if the slopes are different, they will intersect probably somewhere down here, somewhere off the page. Okay, so let's go to another graphing technique and that is using the x and y intercepts. So when you want to find the x and y intercepts, I always tell my students the easiest thing to do is cover up one of the variables and solve the small equation. So if I put my finger over this x, I have y equals 7. That means the y-intercept is 7. y-intercept 7. Now the reason I'm saying that, by covering it up, what I'm essentially doing is saying when I'm on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is 0, right? This is a point 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So if the x is 0, I can just say I'm going to make it 0 by covering it up and solve for the equation. Make sure you don't cover up the sign that's in front of the other variable though, because that could be important. Now, what is the x-intercept? Well, let's cover up the y. And I have positive x equals 7. So the y-intercept is 7. Okay, so the x-intercept was 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the y-intercept is 7. And I put it nicely on the graph so we would have room for it all. And there you would just draw those two and the two points, put a little arrow, and some teachers like it if you label the line as well, x plus y equals 7, check with your teacher for that. The second one here, we have a little more calculation to do because the coefficients, these are the coefficients, 3 and minus 2, they're not 1s. So let's cover up the x, so I'm going to cover up 3x, and I have this little equation now, minus 2y equals 6 and I'm going to solve that by dividing by minus 2 on both sides so we'll do this and we get y equals minus 3 so therefore the y intercept is minus 3 now some teachers are very picky and I used to be as well that if you say y equals minus 3 is the y intercept that is not true because y equals minus 3 is the equation of a line y equals minus 3. So that would be a line like this. And that's not what you're talking about. You want the y-intercept is minus 3. And the x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y. So now I have 3x equals 6. So x is equal to 2. Therefore, the x-intercept is 2. So I'm going to put a dot on my 2 for my x-axis and there we go we have our line right here 3x minus 2y equals 6. Okay moving on to using the slope and y-intercept form. 
Okay, so the slope and y-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Now, if you look at these equations, all three of them are already in that format. We'll talk about rearranging in the next little part. But right now, you can see y equals 2x. Now, you also learned something in grade 9 called direct and partial variation. One of these equations is a direct relation. Direct means this one, right? This one's direct because it goes through, it has a zero for the the um, y-intercept. So if it goes through zero, this one is called direct and direct variation. And the other two are partial because these are not zeros. So both of these are partial variations, equations. Okay, so let's go and graph these. Y equals 2x. So I know that my y-intercept is 0. So I put my y-intercept on first. And now I'm going to do the slope. So the slope is 2. It's a good idea to make it a fraction. It's 2 over 1. Any number can be divided by 1. So that means my rise is 2, my run is 1. So from here, I rise 2 over 1. And you can keep going if you want. But if you just do 1 or 2, that's more than enough. So here's my line, y equals 2x. Okay, the second equation, y equals minus 2x plus 3. Now again, I'm going to put the slope over a 1. Sometimes you have a fraction there, right? These ones don't have any fractions. But I start with my y-intercept. So this one has a y-intercept of 3. Let's use purple. So we'll go 1, 2, 3. That's my y-intercept. And now my slope. My slope is minus 2. So that means I'm going to go down 2 and then over 1. Let me just try to keep this from bouncing here. So down 2 over 1. The negative means I'm going to go down. Okay. So I go down 2 over 1. And there's a second point, And I have my line like this. y equals minus 2x plus 3. And the last one, y equals x minus 2. Uh, let's see if I got a different color here. Let's do a blue. So I'm going to go first of all to the y-intercept. Y-intercept is minus 2. So I put that on here. And my slope, what's in front? What's the coefficient here? Well, it's a 1, right? So I have 1 over 1. So I go up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. And there you have your equation graphed very easily. Y equals mx plus b is a nice easy way to do it. Y equals x minus 2. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about in this particular lesson is how to rearrange equations from standard form to slope y-intercept form or the other way. Right? So ax plus by plus c equals 0 where a, b, and c are constants. So I had 3 4 and minus 6 for my a, b, and c. This is standard form of an equation, and this is the slope y-intercept form. Remember the m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. I'm sure you learned that very well in grade 9. Okay, so how do I rearrange this into this format? So you can see I want to have the y on one side, and it can only have a coefficient of 1. It has to have 1 here. So remember that when you move numbers across an equal sign, you have to change the sign. You may have learned it in grade 9 as, let's say I want to move this. So I'm going to add 6 to this side. I add 6 to this side. I have 3x here, so I'm going to subtract 3x's from this to make this 0 on this side. And then I subtract 3x's over here. Much easier to just say, well, I'm going to leave the 4y here. 
because they want the Y on the left side. Doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right, but you want it isolated and a coefficient of one. So right now it has four in front. We're going to have to deal with that. I'm going to move the three X to the other side. That's going to make it minus three X and minus six is going to become plus six. And finally, I'm going to divide by four. When I divide by four, I must divide every term by four. You know that to be true because if I said um, eight plus four is equal to 12, and if I only divided one of these numbers by two, it would no longer be true. However, if I divide each equation by two, each, each term, sorry, by two, I would have four plus two equals six, you see? So that's why you must do the same to each term. So when I'm finished here now, I have y equals minus three quarters x plus, now six over four, you should reduce that, divide both by two, three over two. Now you could graph this if you wanted to. Here's your y-intercept and here's your slope. The second one we're going to do y equals minus two-thirds x minus five-six. I want to put it into standard form. So this is slope y-intercept form. So here's your slope, there's your y-intercept. Now the ones with fractions like this, some students get a little confused because when you go into standard form, you don't want fractions. So you have to look at this equation and say, how would I get rid of a three and a six? And you should be thinking, if I multiplied every term by a six. And again, that's okay. If I said one plus two equals three, and I decided to multiply everything by three, I would say three plus six equals nine, right? It's still true. So I multiply everything by six. So I'm gonna say six y equals six times minus two thirds x minus six times five over six. And I think you can see that the, um, let's just keep going here. So this three goes into six two times and two times minus two is minus four x. And this six goes into this six one time and I have minus five. So now to get it into standard form, I want ax plus by plus c equals zero. So I'm going to move everything to the left side here. The reason I'm going to the left is because I want this to be positive. So I'm going to move that over. I'm gonna say four x, and I still have the six y here, it's positive, plus six y, and bring the five over, plus five equals zero. There's your first lesson for grade 10 curriculum. Basically review, a um, little bit of vocabulary, and very important, the drawing or sketching of equations of lines. Drawing lines is a really important skill. You still are graphing lines when you get to calculus. So it's a skill that you're going to use over and over and over again. So learn it well. So hope that helped you out, and please subscribe if you haven't. And welcome to Grade 10.